Hi, I'm Kim, and I'm sharing our Advent devotion with us this week. We're in our third week of Advent already, and our passage for this week is Isaiah 35, 1 through 10. Uh, David did a great message on this on Sunday, so if you weren't here, I encourage you to go back and listen to that. I'm just sharing a few thoughts today that will help, hopefully help us as we continue to celebrate Advent and the arrival of Jesus. So our theme for this week of Advent is joy. And if you look at Isaiah 35, in most Bibles, you'll see a, a heading at the top that says, The Joy of the Redeemed. And you may know that those headings weren't added until later. They were added in by some biblical scholars, but they can actually help serve as, as some helpful guides in many cases. And uh, in the case of Isaiah 35, with this title, The Joy of the Redeemed, it can cause us to wonder, who were the redeemed? Who were the redeemed and why were they joyful? And as we read through the passage, we see that the redeemed were the exiles. David gave a good explanation of that on Sunday, if you want a more thorough um, explanation of who the exiles were. But the short and sweet is that they were uh, Israelites who had been exiled from their homeland in Judah because of their continued disobedience against God. They had been sinful, and so they were no longer able to go into God's uh, presence to worship because they weren't near the temple anymore. Where we want to focus today is in Isaiah 35, verse 8. And we see here that Isaiah is prophesying about God making a way for the exiles to be able to come back into his presence. We know that ultimately that that was fulfilled in Jesus, who tells us that he is the way, and he is the truth, and he is the life, and that no one can come to the Father except through him. And so we, when we learn that, when we read that, it should give us great joy and um, lives of gratitude, knowing that God has made a way for us to be able to come into his presence. But we can often uh, live like exiles still, or we can get lost along the way, whether that's choosing our own way and blatantly disobeying God, or whether that's um, being misguided or blinded by some things along the path, or we can make a wrong turn, we can make a little compromise that leads to a little, another little compromise that leads to another little compromise, or we can quit because we get hurt or disappointed by, by something in our lives well, when I was thinking about this passage, it made me think about a race that I ran years and years ago. I loved to run, and so when I was in college, I decided I wanted to try to run a marathon. And so I trained all summer, and um, when I was ready to go um, to run the race, my parents flew out there with me to Colorado, and they were my support team and cheered me on, and it was great, and I was excited to face this challenge of this marathon. Um, the morning of the race, it was beautiful, and um, I felt great as we started to run. And me and another woman, we were actually leading the second pack of runners. The elite runners were already out of sight. We couldn't see them, and so there was nobody really directing us along the course um, or showing us where to go. And so about six miles into the race, we came up uh, to a park, and we couldn't figure out which way to go. There was two options. There was um, we could either stay on a gravel road, um, we could go on a, a gravel road, or we could stay on the paved trail, but neither one of them were marked with the race uh, course. And so we decided to stay on the paved trail. But as we continued to run, there were still no markings, no cones, and we weren't sure which way we were going. Uh, and pretty soon we saw a police officer coming up on a motorcycle, and he told us that we had missed our turn about a half a mile back. <laughs> and our only option to get back on the right course was to turn around and to uh, run back that uh, another half mile. And as soon as I turned around, I heard God clearly say to me, that I could either get discouraged and angry and bitter and, um, and quit running, or I could choose to worship. And even though I did want to get a little angry at the race directors who were supposed to be marking the course, um, I chose to worship. I started singing um, worship songs in my head. I thought about some scriptures that I knew, and I was thanking God for the strength and the help that he was giving me. It was still a difficult race. It was There were a lot of hills, and it started to get hot as the morning went on, and it was 26 miles, uh, 27 if you count the extra mile that we did near the beginning of the race. But God taught me some very valuable lessons during that race that have, um, have helped me through many di difficult seasons in my life. Um, in our lives, we can often run after a lot of different things to try to make ourselves happy, and those things can often take us off course for one reason or another. And when we find ourselves off course, we have a choice that we can make. We 
can either stay on that course of destruction and we can harden our hearts, we can um, get discouraged or bitter, and angry, we can quit, or we can choose to worship God. And if we choose to worship God and trust in Him and turn to Him, then we experience the joy that the exiles did, the joy of His presence. In Psalm 16, it says, in his presence is fullness of joy. And we know that when we are in God's presence, that when we turn to him, that all those other things that we were running after, those desires that we had, they're ultimately all only fulfilled truly in him. Because Jesus isn't only the way and the truth and the life. He's the living waters, and he's the bread of life, and he's the vine, and he's the light of the world. And every longing and desire we have is, is truly only ultimately met in him. So let's pray. Father, we thank you so much that in our sin and rebellion uh, against you, you've chosen to make a way. you desired um, to be with us. And you long for us. And you've chosen us. And so we want to choose you, God. We choose you. We choose to trust you. Uh, we, we say that um, you, Jesus are the way and the truth and the life and uh, we need your help to walk along this way and so god i pray that you would help us today help us to choose you help us to love you with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength and experience the the true joy the fullness of joy that only can be found in your presence in jesus name